Hey y'all, it's Sue. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be freshening up this blonde with baby lights and a root smudge. So we want maximum brightness and we also want to have an easy grow out. So this is my favorite combo to do for a client who's wanting just that. So if you're interested in seeing how we do this transformation, stay tuned. Let's jump right into sectioning. The sectioning I chose for this client today is typically how I always do my full highlights. I have an upside down triangle in the back and then I split everything below that into two quadrants evenly. And then the front, I always go off the client's natural part. And everything from her hairline to behind her ears is going to be split off of her natural part. The summer's calling. Alright you guys, so let's get straight into the process. What I'm going to be using for her formula is Goldwell OxyCure and 20 Volume. The reason I chose OxyCure instead of my usual Swatch Scott Blonde Me is because from time to time I do like to switch it up. Also with OxyCure, I feel like it adds more of a punch than with Swatch Scott Blonde Me. But I'm still going to get all the added protection and benefits from Olaplex to keep your hair nice and safe and healthy throughout this process. Your diamond in an emerald, it took me forever to find you. Okay, you guys, so today my client's name is Hannah, and she is probably the funniest person that sits in my chair. We always have the best time. A couple of months ago, she came in, and she wanted to change it up from her traditional um, rooted blonde look, so we decided to add in a couple low lights, extend her root a little bit, but also add a little pop piece in the front, so then she's going to have an easier grow out, and she can also give her hair a little bit of a break. Since then, she is now back and ready to go blonde, so we're going to be using baby lights today. And let me tell you why baby lights are going to be my favorite technique for going blonde. Find you. Cause when it's all over, the love that you and the reason that I love baby lights so much is because you're taking finer sections, so the hair is going to grow out a little bit more seamless than with a traditional highlight. Also, you're going to get maximum lift, and nine times out of ten, you're going to get an even lift. The only time really with baby lights you won't get an even lift is whenever there is like a band of permanent color or a demi color that you're having to knock through. But even most of the time with that, you really won't have much banding just because your sections are so fine. You're allowing the product to completely process that area. I know that I can't be without you. This bond is solid gold. We're diamond in an a few tips that I have for whenever it comes to baby lighting is to always make sure you're weaving towards the scalp. The further you are away from the scalp whenever you're weaving, the chunkier your sections are going to be. The closer you are to the scalp, the more fine sections you're going to be taking as you're weaving. Another thing that I've noticed a lot just from classes and students asking or even something that I struggled with a lot in the beginning is whenever you're taking a fine section for a baby light to make sure you're still skimming the top of the surface of the actual section. I feel like in the beginning, a lot of the times what I would do is take the section and almost split that section in half. So then it's more of just like a traditional highlight and not necessarily a baby light. So as you're going through and sectioning, make sure, or when you're going through and weaving, make sure you're still skimming the top like a traditional highlight. This bond is solid gold. We're a diamond and an emerald. It took me four. And now that we have worked our way up to the upside down triangle, I'm just going to go working off of this. This part is super important, just like everything else whenever it comes to the color process, because this is going to be the veil that lays over the back of the head. So nine times out of ten, unless the client's hair is up, they're going to be seeing mainly this part right here. So now we've been through the cold and darkest day. And the foils that I'm going to be using today, you guys, is my Reynolds foils. The reasons I love those foils for the processes like this is just because it is finer, a thinner foil, so I feel like I can pack more into the head than with something that's a little bit thicker. However, there are a lot of different foils that I like to use for different things, so if you're interested in a video like that, just let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to do that for you. And the tools that I'll be using today is for my long blonding comb. It is the comb by Jay-Z Styles and it is my favorite comb for baby lighting. 
Also, with my wet brush clip, you'll see me sectioning a lot with it. It is a great time saver if you can get in the habit of sectioning with your clip. I feel like the wet brush clips are going to be the best because they are just a little bit flimsier than regular clips and they're a little bit easier to maneuver, especially when you're using it for sectioning. And as far as my brushes go, I'm going to be using two different ones, as you may have noticed. I'm using my Goldwell brushes, the big and the mini. The reason I like to have both of these brushes is because on smaller sections, and what I like to use a mini brush for is like the tip of this triangle where the section is a little bit smaller or the hairline. That way I know I'm not oversaturating the foil or wasting any product. And then with my bigger brush, I kind of just go in everywhere else with that. And something I get a lot of questions on is pricing, how I price. So for a full highlight, it's $170, and what that includes is your first bowl of lightener, my time, your root smudge, your toner, and also a treatment at the bowl. And the only time the price increases is if I'm mixing up extra toner or lightener, and then what that is is going to be $20 a bowl of lightener and $10 per toner, or with adding additional services like a cut or extensions. And now we're getting into more detailed work, which is face framing. And I know this can be a little intimidating for some people, but I promise you this method won't really let you down. What I'm going to be doing is kind of just like a typical, like every day, like something that you can do on most clients whenever it comes to their money piece or hairline. So what I'm going to be doing is taking a slice right here diagonally off of her hairline. What this is going to do is followed by another slice and a baby light is going to give her maximum brightness. And then also as she pulls her hair up into a ponytail, it's going to keep her feeling really blonde. Something else when it comes to the hairline and money pieces that you should keep in mind is that these hairs are the most fragile. These hair have the most heat damage from them because clients style those because it's what they can see in the mirror and because clients touch those the most, it's going to be a little bit more fragile. We all know that. So what we're going to be doing is transitioning from 20 volume to 10 volume with Olaplex. Since these hairline pieces are a little bit more fragile, they process a little bit faster and you just want to make sure that you're staying safe as possible during this process and keeping the integrity of her hair. So I'm going to continue doing my two slices and a weave and then transitioning up the hairline and then we'll meet back at the front to connect the money piece in with the hairline. And now working our way to the money piece, we're going to keep that same rule of thumb that we had on the hairline, and that is just doing a few slices, transitioning into baby lights, and then we'll continue up the side of her head. What this is going to be doing is everywhere that you are slicing, that's going to be solid brightness. There's going to be no depth because we're not weaving out anything. We're just taking straight slices off of our hairline. That's what's going to give us that beautiful pop piece in the front. And then transitioning into baby lights, all that dropout from taking that fine baby light is going to almost enhance the brightness of those slices we took. So you can kind of think about it as like contouring and highlighting. Whenever you contour, you create depth. So that dropout is going to be our depth. And then we're also going to have that highlight pieces from the baby light and the slices transitioning around that to really give the front piece a nice pop. We're transitioning back to the side of the head and we're just going to be going up horizontally, keeping those baby lights, keeping those fine sections just so we get maximum brightness and lift. Something else I wanted to talk about today, you guys, is also how to avoid bleeding. I know that can be such a scary thing whenever it comes to foiling and it almost makes it a little bit intimidating, especially whenever you're first starting out. So the first tip is going to be saturation and whenever I saturate anything within a foil, I always start at the mid shaft and feather my way down and then work my way up. 
This is going to ensure that you don't over put any product on top of the head and then also the way I'm folding my foils by double locking them is going to ensure that they're nice and tight and we have no slippage or bleeding. And now that she is fully processed, we're going to be taking her foils out of the bowl, giving her a good wash just to make sure we get all of the extra bleach out and we don't have any residue of that just so our toner takes nice and perfectly. But first, I'm going to be using this NutriCare mask by Fanola. And you guys, I am obsessed. You heard me say it before. All of my clients get a treatment out of the bowl and this is what I have been using lately. And it has been phenomenal. It almost smells like donuts or like butterscotch it just smells delicious and it also does a great job conditioning and giving the hair a good treatment so we're going to go through that and brush it through just so her hair gets fully saturated with this and she can get all the benefits from this treatment and now that she's been sitting in that treatment long enough for me to mix up her root and toner we're going to go through with her rooting what i'm going to be doing is just splitting her hair straight down the middle and focusing on the back and then work my way up to the front this has been my new favorite way to root, and I'm going to be using my mini gold well brush today too, just to diffuse that line from the foil, just because it is a little bit more precise, like I was saying before. What we mixed up for her root is gold well colorant 6A, and it's just going to be straight 6 ash. She is about a level 6 or 5, but we're just going to go ahead and do that. And I do have a few golden rules, you guys, whenever it comes to root smudging, and that's that your formula should always be three-fourths the natural base of your client and then one-fourth of the natural base in A. And that's the reason because whenever you're depositing these tones back into the hair, you want to counteract any warmth that may be caused, and that's exactly what the NA is going to counteract. And the reason you want to use your client's natural base is because you're blending their natural hair into the highlights. So if you want to really seamless grow out, just remember these few golden rules and they'll never let you down. And I know I am contradicting myself a little bit by saying I'm only using 6A, which is 6 Ash by Goldwell Colorants. And that is just because anytime I've ever used 6 in from this color line, it always pulls a little red. I'm not sure what it is about it, but even if you add 6A, it's going to go warm. So whenever you're using Goldwell Colorants, that's the only time I say break this rule and just use straight up 6A, which is 6 Ash. And it's going to give you the most perfect blended grow out. And another tip to have a seamless blend is after I'm done with each quadrant, I'm going to be taking my Jay-Z Styles blending comb. And this is my favorite blending comb and it's super affordable. It's less than $5 on our website if you're wanting it. But go ahead and blend each quadrant after you apply the root product. This is just going to smudge down the root um, just enough just so you get that perfect blend. And don't worry about blending it too much because you do have that barrier of your Fanola mask on the ends. So it's not going to be dragging down onto those previously lightened ends. So you're going to still have a pretty blonde on the ends with the nice soft blended root. Meet me at the cornerstone. I know that I and you guys, now all we have to do is style her out. We're going to do a nice, loose, beachy wave. My favorite way to do this is just going through with a texture spray, spraying it on the hair, combing it through. That's going to give it a little bit of grit. So your curls hold a little bit better, and it is a little bit more PC and natural than just like a spiral curl. And you guys, I hope you love this blonde just half as much as me and my client did. It turned out so amazing for her regrowth to be as as extended as it was it was kind of a bit a little bit of a challenge but it turned out so pretty so i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial on how to do a soft rooted blonde and if you're interested in more videos like this make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel because when it's all over the love that you give will be there to guide you in every way
the summer's call.